गुड इवनिंग मनीष गुड इवनिंग सर कैसा क्या क्या सर हेलो हेलो सर कैसा है हेलो इगा क्या सर ओके 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 एंड मनीष somebody has logged in i think yen uh, who is that anta gotakta alla recognition no that b729 i think they have logged in from mobile just yeah sir just check sir i will just check just check maadi avaru yeah sir Hi Shrank Hello Hi Shrank hang idya Hello ha chana idhe okay okay ji hang idara pa ha chana idara mas pa okay Hi Shiv hang idya pa Good evening, everyone. So there are around twelve people who have connected. Deepika, good evening. Padma Shri. Gautam, Manish, Raksha, Shiv, Shyam. Chitra, Harshita. Okay, uh, so as people uh, start logging in, as the participants starts logging in, uh, is there any uh, questions with respect to yesterday's uh, topic? If there are any questions with anyone, if you have any queries, concerns, okay, this is the time that you could ask. okay still people are logging in i think another 5 uh, minutes is still uh, there for us to start the today's session so i'd be more than happy to answer if you have any uh, queries any questions if there are any questions you could uh, unmute and speak or you could pull on chat we could look at your questions
Have all of you have installed Tally on your computers? Everyone has installed Tally on your computer? Who are yet to install? Can you please uh, put it on chat if anyone still needs any support, help in uh, installing Tally? Okay, please put on chat so that our team members will help you out. So let's start in another uh, three minutes. People are still logging in. Okay, we'll exactly start at seven. Gopal sir, Namaskara, hey Gidira. Gopal? Sir, your voice is still there, Gopal. Hello, Raghu, how are you? Okay, uh, so as we will start another two minutes, can each one of you please put your name, your organization name on chat? So that I also understand from which are all the organization who are all attending. Can you please uh, type on chat mentioning your name and your organization name? Okay. Gopal, super, Mike has problem. Okay, Tally RPM series being stopped or will available for future updates. Frank, no, Tally ERP9 is retired. There is no further developments on Tally ERP9. So last release is 6.6.3, that's all. So any new updates will come only in Tally Prime. Narendra from Glovis, good evening, sir. Palani Kumar, Nutri Neuron, good evening. Gopal, good evening. Good evening, Umesh. sir. Good evening, Umesh. Namaskara, sir. Shivu from Older. Good evening, sir. Raghavendra. Good evening, Raghavendra. Hi, good evening, sir. Okay. Gautam. Good evening, Gaurav Industries. Putraju. Good evening, sir. sir. Good evening. Suchitra from KGA. Namaskara, madam. Where are you? Super. Where are you? Fine, madam. In club, go close, ha? open. Ha? Okay, Gaurav, good evening, Gaurav. Raksha Prabhu, good evening, madam. How are you? How is Sanjay? Hi, Shrank. Good evening, Vijay. Good evening, sir. Chet Sanjay is fine, sir. Okay, thank you. Chetan, how are you, Anitra? Good, 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 evening, good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay. Fine. Next one minute, we will start the session. Okay. So, good evening, everyone. Welcome all of you uh, to the second session today that we are uh, starting. Uh, we'll just wait for one more minute. I think uh, another uh, six, seven members are yet to join. Okay. But anyhow, we'll not wait. We'll exactly start at uh, the next one minute. Okay. 
yeah so can anyone uh, please uh, uh, just recap on what are all the points that we discussed yesterday what are all the topics that we discussed yesterday can uh, each one of you at least uh, start mentioning points what are all the things we discussed yesterday in yesterday's session yeah yeah hi uh, this is ragu here uh, yeah. yesterday we start, we actually though today we got i got um, uh, tally loaded in my laptop okay however yesterday we learned uh, regarding uh, how to create the first company then we also talked about how to create the backup then we also okay. talked about how to change the file mm. how do you make sure that the path has been identified okay. then how to enter edit and address enter all the addresses whatever the company requirements and all the five different tabs uh which which we talked about in uh, tally okay. and uh, uh, very high level on understanding of uh, simple what is credit what is debit which one to credit which one to debit and what are all the accounting standards okay and what is what are all the assets which you are need to take care when you are entering the data and uh, pretty much that's it sir good ragu <laughs> you have covered most of the points <laughs> very good. thank you okay so is there anybody else who want to add to what ragu told okay Uh, fine, not an issue. So let us uh, start today's uh, uh, session. One second, I'm just looking at the recording. okay so good evening everyone uh, so in uh, yesterday session we had the basic understanding of uh, the accounting okay what are all the uh, golden rules of accounting three major uh, uh, rules of accounting which will help us in understanding how uh, the accounts are maintained and we also went through uh, tally basics of tally prime okay how to check the uh, licensing details okay how to check the computer's information details and also we understood all the configurations basically how do you configure the database path uh, the export data path uh, various configurations and we also went through how to create a company all right okay so to, in today's session we will look at uh, accounting masters and accounting vouchers how do you create accounting masters and how do you create accounting vouchers in tally prime so what we will do is as i discussed uh, yesterday there are three different kinds of businesses in which we can take and we can uh, look at how tally can be implemented there one is a business which have which is basically into trading who buy the products and sell the products as is varies who just trades the product who are basically traders the second is manufacturers who also buy the raw materials manufacture the item convert the raw materials to finished goods or semi finished goods and sell those items okay and the third is basically services where they don't deal with any products but they deal with services okay so uh, how to implement tally for all these three organizations so let us uh, take the first as an example of service organization where you don't need inventory you need only accounts so inventories will not be required you need to have just only accounting configurations okay and from there we will build upon if you add inventory how it will work and if you want to have the manufacturing processes how it will work and how you have to implement tally so we will go in three phases the phase one will be only accounting the phase two will be accounts plus inventory for traders 
the phase three will be accounts and inventory for manufacturers. Okay, so this is the uh, phases that we will uh, design our uh, training program. We'll construct our training program. So today we are starting with accounting. Okay, how do you maintain accounts in tally? So once when you are clear on that, we could also further look at how do you add inventory to that? Okay, because you need to remember tally is an accounting application. The base of tally product is accounting. Okay, only once when you use accounting, you could use all other capabilities, all other features of tally. Right? Okay, so we will just move upon. The third phase is basically, okay, uh, Narendra is asking what is the third phase? The third phase will be uh, for manufacturers where you they have the accounting plus the inventory where they uh, procure the raw material and convert it into finished goods and sell that. So which will have both uh, accounting, inventory and the manufacturing. Okay, fine. Sir, when you say manufacturing, it is semi-finished product uh, inventory also. Yeah, it might be semi-finished or it might be okay. finished goods. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. Or it might be fine. even the processing, whatever it is. Okay, okay. Okay, so just to touch upon what's the purpose of this training to help participants to learn Tally Prime and they need to understand how it could be implemented in their business, in their organizations, which will increase efficiency and eliminate duplication of work. So this is the prime objective, the purpose of this training. Okay, so when we come to accounting masters in uh, Tally Prime, so what are all the masters that you have in Tally Prime? With respect to accounts, there is an accounting groups, there is accounting ledgers, there are vouchers, typically what we call it as vouchers or voucher templates that you could call, and there is currency, currency master. So these are all masters in tally. In addition to this, there is something called cost center, okay, which we look at at the later stage, or there might be some budgets, masters for budgets and various things. Okay, so in nutshell, Okay, these are the four major uh, accounting masters that you need to be aware of once when you want to start working on tally. So what is accounting groups? So now while, while do one thing, uh, let me just uh, open my tally uh, so that uh, we could see, I'll be toggling between uh, my tally and the presentation so that it becomes easier for everyone to understand. Okay, so I'm just logging on to my tally. Yesterday we created one company, right? So let us just take the same company and uh, let us continue further. So it becomes easier for all of us to learn. Okay, MCS training company. This is the data which we created yesterday. This is the company which we created yesterday. Okay, fine. So we were talking of accounting groups, accounting ledgers, voucher templates and currencies. These are the four major masters in accounting. So what is accounting groups? See accounting groups are nothing but the major uh, summary of various ledgers which are being put into groups. So what are all the kinds of groups that you will have in Tally? So once when you log into Tally on gateway of Tally, if you go to chart of accounts under masters, when you click on chart of accounts, <clears throat> you could see the groups, existing groups, the existing ledgers, the voucher types, the currencies, budgets and scenarios. So first let us get into groups. So once when you look into these groups, there are some, some 28 predefined groups that is already existing in your data. So when you create a company in Tally, these 28 groups gets default created, automatically created along with the data. So what are these groups? These groups are basically a summary of all the ledgers which fall into that and which has been grouped under any of the four major parameters. 
either it might be an asset or it might be a liability or it might be an income or it might be an expenditure okay so how do you check that say example there is capital account so if you just go to capital account okay if you look at here how it has been created okay here if you look at under what it is says under as primary and nature of group it has been mentioned as liability so this basically comes under a liability capital comes under liability so similarly if you look at the next group called reserves and surplus which is there this reserves and surplus is grouped under capital account means the capital it is coming under capital and the capital is coming under liabilities so it also forms part of liability so like that there are 28 groups that has been defined say example you go to current assets current assets is nature of grouping is asset you could see over here the nature of grouping is asset so which comes under the asset side of the balance sheet if you go to bank accounts the bank accounts is coming under current assets and current assets comes under assets so bank accounts also forms under balance sheet so any of these groups can fall under four major parameters four major categories if it is a balance sheet item either it can be an asset or a liability if it is a pnl item it can be either an income or an expenses so if you look at what are all the four major groups that has been defined so these are the four major groups that ultimately for reporting purpose which is being classified either it is an asset or a liability both asset and liability forms part of balance sheet next is income or expenses both income and expenses form part of your profit and loss so this is how the accounting group are created in tally now example if you just go to tally over here and look at these groups which are already there so there is branch and divisions comes under liability okay or capital account comes under liability or if you just go to direct expenses comes under expense so here if you look at these are the four major groups i said liability income or expenses so all these groups which has been defined comes under any of these four categories only you cannot have any groups outside this categories this is how the basic design of accounting is built okay so now if you look at all this 28 categories what you are seeing on tally over here if you can group it okay it comes under these many these of the four categories either liabilities so branch and division comes under liability capital account comes under liability under capital account you have reserves and surplus current liabilities comes under liability under current liability you have duties and taxes provisions and sundry creditors loans liability which comes under liabilities under that you have bank od secured loans and unsecured loans and suspense account so these are all forms part of liabilities under current assets you have sorry under assets you have current assets under current assets you have bank account cash in hand as a group deposits as a group loans and advances as a group stock in hand and sundry debtors as subgroups under current assets you have fixed assets you have investments and miscellaneous expenses as an asset under assets so both assets and liabilities form balance sheet accounting heads when you come to profit and loss in under income you have direct income indirect income and sales account under expenditure you have direct expenditure indirect expenditure and purchase accounts so this forms 28 groups which you are able to see it on tally so these are default groups that are created now if you need any more additional groups 
if you need any more additional groups you can go and create your own group say like example i have seen lot of organization under expenditure indirect expenditure they create multiple groups they call it as administrative expense financial expense and uh, other expenses as subgroups so if you want to create those groups you could also go and create in tally to create groups in tally it is very simple come back to gateway of tally okay so one more thing in tally most of the tally has lot of shortcut menus okay so enter enter will take you inside the particular one and escape will bring out of that screen so it will take you to the previous screen escape will take you to the previous screen and enter will take you to the next screen okay so now i want to create one group called administrative expenses so how do i create that so on gateway of tally you have masters under masters you have create click on create so here what do you want to create do you want to create a group or ledger or currency whatever the things okay so i want to create a group okay what is the group name administration expenses this comes under what so here you could tag this to an existing group or you don't want to tag to an existing group you could take it as primary and define whether it's an asset or a liability or income or an expenditure okay so i'll show you both the examples the example administrative expenses comes under indirect expenses so i'm taking under expense indirect and i'm saving it accept yes i have saved this okay now if you look at my chart of accounts under chart of accounts if i go to groups look at the groups here you could see under indirect expense you are able to see one more group called administrative expense administration expense so similarly based on the need you could create any number of groups that you want okay so let me just create one more group let me just go to create and say i want to create a group called uh, assets in hyderabad branch this is one group which typically i don't want to tag it to any of the existing group i want to take it to primary so i could define that okay and i could say it is a primary group now once when you select primary it will ask what is the nature of the group so here you can find there are only four options asset liability income expenditure okay so here i am defining it as an asset okay so now i have form i have created one more group now when i go to chart of accounts groupings so here you could see here it's coming at, at the top assets in hyderabad branch it is not linked to any of the existing groups it is a primary group and it is defined under asset so this will appear in your balance sheet if it has any balance sheet. is that clear okay next comes ledgers so what is ledger basically ledgers are the last set of masters where vouchers are linked so when you start making vouchers or transactions you will start linking it to a ledger not to the group and ledger is linked to the group okay so every ledger must be linked to an accounting group so any accounting ledgers that you create in tally must be linked to a group and that group is linked to either asset or liability or income or expenditure okay and always the group and the ledger the accounting group and the ledger have parent child relationship means every ledger should be linked to a group and you can link to only one single group 
so here ledger is create, uh, treated as child and accounting group is treated as parent so at any given point of time child can have only one parent you cannot link it to multiple parents all right and every child is linked to a parent similarly <coughs> every ledger in tally is linked to a group okay so that group can be under any of the four heads assets or liabilities income or expenditure so when you create a ledger it has to be linked to one single group you cannot link to multiple groups a single ledger cannot be linked to a multiple group but a group can have multiple ledgers that is the reason it is called parent child relationship accounting group is parent and accounting ledger is child is that clear okay now when should we come to accounting ledgers there are only two ledgers that is auto created when you create your company one is cash which is typically under cash in hand which comes under current assets and which forms under asset side of the balance sheet and one more is profit and loss account profit and loss account is internally built so that your reporting becomes much more simpler only these two ledgers are created once when you create a company any additional ledgers all ledgers additional ledgers needs to be created based on your requirement so there is no standard ledgers only two standard ledgers one is cash one is profit and loss account all other ledgers based on the need based on need for that particular data we need to create okay so now if you want to look at in tally okay if you go to chart of accounts okay so let us just look at the ledger chart of accounts okay so once when you look at the ledger it will not just show only the ledger it will also show the parent of that ledger now you start validating this statements what are all the statements that we did ledger is the last set of masters where vouchers are linked so this we will validate when we do a transaction when you do a voucher entry every ledger must be linked to an accounting group so as i told you there are only two ledgers that is over here one is cash so if you look at the cash ledger it is linked to cash in hand okay so when you create a ledger it has to be linked to any of the groups you cannot create a ledger without linking to a group okay now if you want to look at where cash in hand is linked so you could just go back to the presentation over here if you look at here on the asset side there is cash this cash is linked to cash in hand cash in hand is linked to current asset and current asset is linked to asset that is how the linking is taking place in tally and any additional ledgers you need to create of your own okay and the accounting group and the accounting ledger has parent child relationship this is what i was talking about so example when you say cash this is ledger so it is a child it is behaving like a child now this cannot be linked to two groups it can be linked to any one group because the child can have only one parent the child cannot have multiple parents similarly in ledger you can link it to only one single group and that group will be linked to asset liability income or expenditure either of the one hope this is clear okay i'll do one thing i'll just give you one minute time if anyone has any questions you could just unmute and ask the question before we further move
Narendra wants to see the Excel chart. Is this what you want to see, Narendra? Okay, are there any questions? Or can we move forward? Okay, I think there are no questions, so we'll move forward. Next is accounting vouchers. Vouchers are nothing but templates for you to do a accounting entry, accounting vouchers, accounting transactions. It is nothing but a template which is created so that it becomes easier for the user to use the template and make the transactions and create the transactions. Okay, so in accounting vouchers, there are eight different kinds of vouchers in accounting. The receipt voucher, the payment voucher, the purchase voucher, the sales, contra voucher, journal voucher, debit note and credit note. Okay. So, depending on the nature of the transaction, you need to create the vouchers. These vouchers are auto-created. These are the default vouchers that is available in Tally. If you need any additional vouchers, again, you can create your own vouchers, okay, and link it to any of the existing voucher types. Okay, so these are all the nature of transaction. Based on the nature of transaction, these voucher templates are available in Tally. Okay, so these are some of the standard voucher templates. Uh, don't really worry about the inventory and payroll. Currently, we will not discuss on that. Once when we take those topics, we'll discuss. You just concentrate only on accounting vouchers. So there are some eight vouchers, the standard accounting vouchers that's available. Okay. So now let's do one thing. Okay, if you're clear on these things, first let us start with creating few of the groups, then we will create few of the ledgers. Hope everyone has tally in your computer. I want each one of you to do it hands on so that you can experience yourself. Further, it will help you to do practice post this session. So can all of you hope everyone has created one sample company in tally. Has anyone not created a company yet? Please create one company in Tally. Okay, so if you need any assistance, we are there. Okay, uh, my team members, Manish and Shiv are there. They can help you out in creating one company. I hope everyone has created a company. Now, what I would request is, each one of you, can you go and create one group called administration expenses, administrative expenses under indirect expense. So open your tally. Okay, you are able to see my screen where I have opened tally. Similarly, what I would suggest is you please minimize the screen and open your tally on your computer. Open your tally on your computer. Minimize the screen. Don't uh, close the screen. Just minimize this. Open tally on your computer. Okay. Open the data which you have created. Hope everyone is following. Yeah. Okay. Open the data. Once when you open the data on gateway of tally, you have the first option under masters called create. Click on create. Sir, one second, sir, one second. Yeah. 
when the gateway of tally where we to go data right no no on gateway of tally first option under master is called create create yes okay click on create yeah you will get accounting masters groups yeah. ledgers currency select groups click on groups yeah okay now create one name okay it's asking for the name type administrative expenses administrative expenses alias leave it blank enter under what group select expense indirect select expense indirect yeah then all other options let it be whatever it is yes or no not a problem enter 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 and accept hope everyone has created okay yeah. similarly create one more group okay call it as uh, fixed assets in project site fixed assets in project site and link it under fixed assets under take it under fixed assets accept and save this master hope everyone is able to follow it yeah hope everyone is able Mahesh, to create Mahesh, i am i have a problem you can seeing when i tried entering it is saying uh, uh, the name already exists what is the name you have taken sir uh, fixed assets no you say fixed assets already exists you need to yeah. say fixed assets in project site oh okay because fixed assets is a standard uh, group that's already available sir where do i see what i created yeah that i'll tell you okay sir so once when you have created okay once when you have completed this creation you could come back escape and escape click on escape and come back to gateway of tally varun mahesh, mahesh this should come under which one fixed assets under fixed assets under fixed assets yeah varun uh, project type under fixed assets right uh, it is you need to create as fixed assets under project site and it, you should link it to fixed assets okay so if all of you have created how do you go and verify what you have created you can just on gateway of tally come to chart of accounts when you click on chart of accounts you can see the list groups go to groups click on groups so this is where you can see what are all the groups you have created in addition yeah. to what is standard available so here you yes. are able to find under fixed assets you are able to find fixed assets in project site and under indirect expense you are able to find administrative expenses so similarly whatever the groups that you want you can go on creating any number of groups and it can be at any hierarchical level okay so this is about how do you create groups okay next is how do you create ledgers okay so what i have done is i will just 
show you how do you create ledgers because ledger is the last leaf as i told you which will get linked to and vouchers okay so i will just just go through it i'll just show you how to create ledgers and after that you can create of your own so to create ledgers on gateway of tally click on create select ledger. what do you want to create ledger now it is asking what is the name say example i am just creating one supplier account okay so example i'll just call it as uh, narhari traders he is my supplier from whom i buy the products okay alias so this is the name name should be unique always you cannot have same narhari traders once again alias you can leave it blank or if you have any codes that you could maintain there you could give a description for this ledger what is this ledger all about then again it is asking under and it is showing all the list including the groups that you created okay expenses so narahari traders is my supplier so he he, he comes under what supplier Expense. comes under creditors sundry creditors okay so sundry creditors and sundry creditors basically comes under liability so i am liable to pay money to him because he is my supplier i am purchasing the goods from him so i am supposed to pay him money so he is my liability okay then it is asking maintain bill by bill details this is very very critical for all suppliers and customers that is sundry creditors and sundry debtors enable this bill wise details because what happens is we continuously start dealing with suppliers and customers okay every now and then we will start billing them they will ask for materials we will bill them we will buy material from our suppliers but when we want to see how much we owe them how much we need to pay them we need to have under which bill how much is pending to be paid in terms of sundry creditors so to track this bill wise details are very very critical and tally handles this in a very beautiful way okay it's one of the unique features that tally has where you could have bill wise details and you could track your supplier payments outstanding payable or your sundry debtors that is your customers outstanding receivables okay it gives a fantastic report so enable this maintain bill wise details then it is asking for default credit days so now we might have arrangements with our suppliers saying that okay you continue to supply every 15 days i'll make payment 15 days of credit or 30 days of credit or 10 days of credit whatever we have agreed upon so that the system will keep track and tell us when we are supposed to pay okay so example i am just saying 15 days of credit is available check for credit days during voucher if i say yes it will not allow me to change if it is no at the voucher you could still go and make a changes okay then specify credit limit credit limit basically works for your central customers where i am uh, selling to my customers and i want to keep a track of credit okay i don't want to overshoot my credit okay and it's not required generally it's not required for my suppliers then address gandhi bazar basavanagudi bangalore okay and all these things are not mandatory it's our optionals it's better to have all the details okay pin code four mobile number 
Okay, provide additional contact details. You could enable that. Mr. Narahari, phone number. Okay, email ID. Dot com. Website details, additional CC. You could maintain all these details. Next is the PAN. Okay, what is the PAN number of uh, Narahari traders? If you have, you could update that. I'm just giving some uh, this thing. And this is very cr critical because now GST is uh, the current law. Okay, so is Narahari traders registered under GST, you need to first check out, okay? Generally, it will be available on their bill. You will have their GST number, okay? Whether he's a composition, composition dealer or a regular dealer or he's an unregistered dealer or he's a consumer. So currently, let me just take it as a regular dealer. So I've just given the uh, number. Now it is giving me a warning saying, verify the GST number. So this GST number is wrong. So Tally has inbuilt capabilities so that it does some kind of uh, validation to tell you whether it is right or wrong. How do you check whether this is right or wrong? One more way of checking. So how many of you uh, log into GST portal? Does anyone know how to log into GST portal? You need not even log in, just go to GST portal to find and you could find out whether any given GST number is right or not. Yeah, Raksha Sanjay. Yeah, Girija, yes, good. So a lot of people know how to do it. Okay, it's very simple. I'll just show it to you. Okay, if you need to go, just open uh, GST website. Okay, I'll just take one minute for you to show how you can check here. So there is search taxpayer. Click on search taxpayer. By what? By the number or PAN number, whatever the number you want to check, you could do that. So just give the number that you have and enter the CAPTCHA details, click on search. See here, you get the complete details. This GST number, legal name of the business, trade name, Meda Consultancy Services, effective from 1st April 2000, 1st July 2017. He's a regular dealer. So here you could know whether he's a composition or a regular dealer and whether he's active or not, what kind of organization it is, whether he's a proprietary ship, partnership, company, various things, and principal office address, registered office address. All these details are available on a public domain. You could also check, okay, under what are all the HSN they have registered? Okay, what are all the products that they could deal with? Primary HSN registration details. Okay, and you could also look at the filing table. Click on show filing table. It will tell you when was their last filing done. March filing is completed, filed. GSTR 3B is filed. GSTR 1 FF is also filed. So you could know any business, if you just know their GST number, you could go and check all the details. It is just like my horoscope is available over here for business. It is as simple as that and it is on a public domain. You need not have any login details, anything. You could just any public can just log into this portal and check. 
Okay, so this is one additional information. Hope this will be helpful for all of you. Okay, anyhow, the GST number is wrong. Okay, let, I'll continue with it. Let me make the changes later. Okay, and what is the opening balance? So example, the opening balance, I'm just giving as 10,000 rupee credit. Okay, which I owe him under bill number 1234. Okay, and save. I just created one supplier account by name Narahari Traders. Okay, so let me just create one more account, a bank account. Say example, let me just say it is State Bank of India. I'm creating one bank account. I have one current account. I want to create that bank account. This comes under, here you have bank account or OCC account or OD account. So if it's an OD account, take it to OD account. It goes on the liability side of the balance sheet. If it is a normal current account, you could take it as bank accounts, which comes under asset side of the balance sheet. So now as I select the bank as the group, bank account as the group, now there are some additional information which is asking. What is the account number of the bank account number? IFSC code. Swift code, then bank name. So all banks are listed over here. See, if you look at the chart, there are some 630 banks that is listed. Okay, all banks which we know has been listed in tally, you could just go and select, link it to the right bank, State Bank of India in India, Malayshuram branch. Okay, then you could have this checkbook details. Okay, if there is a checkbook and you want to control the checkbook details, you could configure all these things. Okay, say example, I'll just say yes and give check number starting from one triple zero. One lakh one two five zero fifty numbers. It's automatically taken fifty numbers and name of the book, book one. Say example, I'm just saying. So I have one single book. Okay, I could also configure the check printing details. This will come at the later stage. Okay, and just save this. I don't have any GST number for this. And the opening balance that I have in the bank is 10,000 rupees. And I've saved it. Like this, you can go and create all your ledgers that is required for your company. And any new ledgers you could create on a fly while making the transaction. That also we will train you how to do that. Is this clear? So now if you want to look at what are all the ledgers I created, I need to go to chart of accounts on gateway of tally and click on ledgers. I get here the list of ledgers along with the linked groups. So under bank accounts, I have State Bank of India. Under sundry creditors, I have Narahari traders. Similarly, as I go on creating the masters, my ledgers will automatically appear in chart of accounts. And these are the ledgers that I could link while making the transaction. Hope this is clear. Okay, so now let's do one thing. Let us create some ledgers. So here you can just look at my screen. Okay, I have told you to create some 15 ledgers. And if you go to this, you can understand. I've also mentioned under what group you have to create these ledgers. So Rama Capital Account under Capital Account, State Bank of India under Bank Accounts, Local Purchases under Purchase Accounts. So under is basically your groups. And the first name is your accounting ledger. Can you start creating in your tally? all these ledgers. So there are some 12 ledgers that I have listed out over here. Okay, so capital accounts, State Bank of India under bank accounts, local purchase under purchase accounts, local sales under sales account, input CGST under duties and taxes. Okay, input SGST under 
duties and taxes output cgst output sgst electricity expenses under indirect expense office rent under indirect expense kothari electronics who is a supplier and have also given his gst number under sundry debtors and balaji agencies who is our customer along with the gst number under sundry debtors so i'll do one thing i will parallelly create if you have any issues you could look at it and you could also create in your tally okay so let me start with rama capital account so now to create a ledger i'm just going clicking on create on gateway of tally ledger rama capital account this comes under capital account group is under capital account address if you have all the address details you could mention this or you could leave it blank and save this accept okay next state bank of india i have already created state bank of india local purchases local purchase i am creating under purchase accounts i am linking it to purchase accounts group you could look at here i have linked it to purchase accounts group type of ledger just say as not applicable okay is gst applicable yes it is applicable this is only accounts that we are doing so we need to configure all the gst here only enable set all the gst details make it as yes you could give the description and hsn code for this purchase ledger 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 i'm just giving that nature of transaction i'm just leaving it as blank we'll decide at the transaction level and it is taxable taxable at what percentage so example since this is a uh, normal purchase accounts i am just saying purchase accounts uh, local purchase at 12% okay it is taxable at 12% and we are into service basically that is what i told let me just say it is service okay generally services are billed at 18 but still for example i am just telling you okay we could just take it as local purchase 12% okay then we have local sales under sales account local sales this has to come under sales account take it under sales account type of ledger leave it as not applicable gst is applicable enable set alter gst details what is the hsn code i am just taking 1234567 nature of transaction make it not applicable and taxability it is taxable at example 18% okay i am just taking this as local sales at 18% okay is this clear any questions on this no sir okay next let us create input cgst under duties and taxes so i am just saying input cgst at 6% because we told purchase is at 12% so hope everyone knows the gst how the gst law works okay i'm just giving you a brief if it is a local purchase which is purchased inside the state so example i am in karnataka my supplier is also in karnataka then it becomes a local purchase there the gst applicable will be cgst and sgst so if it is 12% tax 
six percent goes to CGST and six percent goes to SGST. Okay, so I'm just taking under duties and taxes and linking it to type of duty tax is GST and it comes under central tax. So CGST stands for Central Goods and Service Tax. It is a central tax charged at six percent. Round off, I'm saying not applicable. Saved. Then I'm just saying input SGST. So to recall what I have created last item, last ledger, you could just press on control R. It is just calling the last ledger created. And I could make the necessary changes to it. Call it as SGST. Input SGST. Duties and taxes comes under GST tax. And it is a state tax which is charged at 6%. Okay. Next. For sales, there is an output CGST and output SGST that also comes under duties and taxes. So I'm just creating output CGST at 9% because my sales is at 18%. Duties and taxes, GST, it comes under central tax. It is a CGST. So I have taken it under central tax and it is at 9%. Similarly, output SGST at 9%. Under duties and taxes, which comes under GST and it is state tax, which is at 9%. I have saved. So I have created duties and taxes, output SGST, output CGST. Next is electricity expenses under indirect expense. Electricity expenses group comes under indirect expense. Okay. Then type of ledger not applicable. Is GST applicable on electricity expense? No, GST is not applicable. Electricity is out of GST. So make it as not applicable. Okay, saved. Then office rent under indirect expenses. So does the rent attract GST? Yes, it attracts GST. Especially it's even it's an office rent. So it will attract GST. So when you create a ledger called office rent, Take it under indirect expense and specify GST is applicable. Yes. Specify set alter GST rates and give the HSN code. So I'm just giving, I'm not sure whether is this the right HSN code. I'm just giving some HSN code for this. And what kind of transaction it is, it is purchase taxable because it is a local transaction. It is purchase taxable and it is charged at 18%. So integrated tax will be 18%. And it's a service. It is not a goods. Okay. Tag this as service, type of supply as service and save. Okay, I have saved this office rent. Next. I have one supplier by name Kotari Electronics and his GST number is also specified. Okay, and I also have Bal Balaji Agencies who is my customer and his GST number is also specified. So 29 stands for Karnataka. Okay, code for Karnataka is 29. So let me just create Kotari Electronics. Kotari Electronics. He is my supplier. So he comes under sundry creditors. Maintain bill by bill. Yes, I require that. His address, if you know his address, you can update that. Nine. Okay. All the details. Then he's a regular dealer. 
and he has a gst number it is 29 g b g p k 29 b g p k a b g p sorry 29 a b g p k 5493 e 5493 e 1z e 1z e See here, once you give the right GST number, it will not give any message for you to say invalid or check before saving all those things. Okay. So here's my sundry creditors I've just saved. Similarly, I have Balaji agencies as my customer. He comes under sundry debtors because he's my customer. Okay, all again, all these details you could specify. And his GST number is 29 AABFB 3546M. Yeah. 46M 1Z8. Okay, so here also it didn't give any error. So the GST number is. Correct. So I have created 12 ledgers. Now, if you want to go and see what are all the ledgers you have created, come back to Gateway of Tally, click on Chart of Accounts, and click on Ledgers. See, this is the ledgers that you have created. State Bank of India under Bank Accounts, Cash, which is default available. Under Sundry Debtors, you have Balaji Agencies. Under Capital, you have Rama capital account. Under duties and taxes, you have input CGST 6%, input SGST 6%, output CGST 9%, and output SGST 9%. Under sundry creditors, you have two suppliers, Kotari Electronics and Narahari Traders. And under expenditure, you have electricity expense and office rent. Under purchase, you have local purchase at 12%. And under sales, you have local sales ledger. So these are some of the ledgers that we created. Can you all parallelly create in your tally? Where is rent into this? We created one rent ledger, right? You need to be a little louder. I'm unable to hear. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay, office rent. Okay. Okay. So is there any difficulties in creating this? Does anyone need any support? Do you have any uh, clarification? Do you need any assistance? Please let us know. Okay, we can help you out in creating this. And all those who have created, good. So we, we can further proceed. Sorry, in order to create, we need that slide. In order to create, you need this slide. Okay. Understood. So, that we'll do it, not an issue. Just okay. Answer. So this first five ledgers have you created? Yes, sir. First we created when you are creating, we are going through that we can create, not an issue. Okay. So I will do one thing. This presentation I will share it on WhatsApp group. Yeah, yeah, we can create it. Okay. So that you could go through this presentation and you could create yourself. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay, so post this uh, training session, I will uh, share it on WhatsApp group. You can go through this. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. So is there any, any clarification? No, sir. Okay. So is there any questions? I think we are uh, up. What is the time now? Let me just look at the time. It's around 8, 8, 10. Okay, we have another 5, 10 minutes. 
okay so we could do one thing okay if you have already created and if everyone is clear okay we could start on transaction can we start doing a transaction is it okay yeah okay fine so let us uh, continue for next 5 10 minutes of time okay and let us start a transaction okay so let me do one thing okay so how do we take this opening my notepad okay and i will give some scenarios and i will show you how to create transactions for that so what you do what you need to do is we need to have one flow of understanding so that we can create those transaction so i'm just saying on 1st of april 2021 uh rama started his business business by investing 10 lakhs as capital he transferred rupees 10 lakhs to company bank account okay so now a new business is getting started on 1st of april 2021 rama is the uh, owner of the organization he has a capital and he has invested 10 lakh rupee capital so what is the transaction that you need to pass in tally for this so in 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 your tally books okay so whatever the company that we have created okay so we have created one ledger called uh, rama as capital account correct under capital account we have rama capital account so we have already created this ledger okay so now he is bringing in cash of uh, sorry he is bringing in 10 lakh rupees for this business so what will be the transaction first it will be a receipt transaction okay so you need to create receipt voucher right so let us go to tally so now in the presentation i had already told you what are all the different kinds of vouchers that are there as part of your accounting vouchers so to make a receipt entry in tally come back to your gateway of tally on gateway of tally you can see after masters there is transaction under transaction you have vouchers click on vouchers once when you click on vouchers few things that you need to be Yeah, you, you need to be aware of. Okay, so first let me do one thing. Let me just click on double entry so that it becomes easier for you to understand. Okay, so now I'm on voucher entry. On the left hand side top, it is showing what kind of voucher it is. It is saying as payment, but I don't want to make payment. I want to make a receipt voucher because the example here is. On first of April, Rama started his business by investing ten lakh rupees as capital. He transferred ten lakh rupees to bank account. So, what should be the transaction? The transaction for the company is receipt voucher. The date is first of April, twenty twenty one. Okay. So now, in receipt voucher, who, what account I need to debit and what account I need to credit? So, to go to receipt voucher, first click on the right hand side. You can find all the voucher. shortcut keys that's available so f6 is for receipt click on a receipt i'm on receipt now so what should i debit what should i credit now you have to go back to yesterday's discussion what we had the golden rules of accounting okay so you have to refer that and say what should get debited and what should get credited since it say yeah capital investment by the owner of the organization so there are two accounts that are getting affected one is capital account second is bank account because he has transferred the money to bank that is sbi so what is the nature of capital account and what is the nature of bank account bank account is a real account 
right? And you are getting money to business. So in the real account, interest, debit, what comes in? So bank should get debited. What should get credited? Capital account should get credited. What is capital account? It is a personal account. What is the rule for personal account? Debit the giver and credit the receiver. Right? So credit is from a capital account. So the mm -hmm. transaction is you have to debit State Bank of India and credit Rama capital account. So here, once when you come to receipt entry, okay, the date you need to specify, okay, what is the date? Okay, of course, the, we are on 1st of April because this is the first entry that we are doing and we need to debit State Bank of India. Sorry, it is asking for credit first because it is two. Two means credit. Credit is Rama Capital account, 10 lakh rupees, debit to State Bank of India, 10 lakh rupees. Or sorry, I took 1 lakh. Okay. One more zero, 10 lakh rupees. Now, since it was a bank transfer, it is asking for the nature of transaction, whether it is a check or DD or whether it is an e-fund transfer, what it is. Another. Okay, say example, I'll just say it was an e-fund check. Okay, now you need to give the instrument number. Date of the instrument from which bank the check was given. The check was given from Canara Bank. You could specify all those details. Okay. Being capital invested. So this is the entry that I am making. The first entry where the owner of the organization has invested his capital and he has transferred that money to bank account. So he has given a check and that check has got deposited to bank account. So the entry that we are doing is a receipt entry on 1st of April, crediting Rama Capital account and debiting State Bank of India. Accept? Yes, this has got accepted. Now the receipt voucher has become number two. Okay. Is this clear? So now if I want to look at what are all the transactions I have done, what are all the watches I have done, where I need to go, on Gateway of Tally, just go to Daybook. It will show what are all the transactions that you have done for a particular date. So on 1st of April, I have just done only one transaction. I have got receipt to my bank account. Okay. Just click on enter. You could see the transaction. Credit to capital account and debit to bank. Okay. So I've got this money now. What next? What are all the next that we are going to do? One second. Okay. So let me just take the next transaction. Next example. Okay, we'll close with this example for the day. The next example is on 5th of April. Uh, no, not 5th of April. I'll take on 2nd of April. On 2nd of April, which it drew? Rupees ten thousand for office expenses from SBI. So on second of April, okay, we withdrew ten thousand rupees for office expenses. So we withdrew from which account? We withdrew from State Bank of India. So what is the nature of transaction we need to do here? The first 
the nature of transaction is a contra entry why it is contra entry because the effect is on both bank and cash so where if the money is just getting transferred from one account to another account basically it was in bank i just withdrew that money and i am keeping cash for making some expenses so it is default so it has to be entered under contra entry and what should get debited what should get credited now so which are all the ledgers which will participate state bank huh state bank debited okay so let us see so which are all the uh, ledgers that is participating sbi is participating and cash. cash is participating so i am withdrawing money so what will uh, so both cash and bank are what real accounts so what is the rule for real account debit what comes in credit what goes out that's the rule so in this rule so what is coming in for business what is coming in cash is coming in so cash should be debited what is going out going out is what is getting reduced bank balance is getting reduced so bank should be credited so debit should be cash and credit should be bank that is state bank of india and it should be a contra entry on 2nd of april okay now let us look at how do i make this transaction on tally so i am just going to vouchers once again now as i told currently i am in receipt transaction on the left hand side you could see it's a receipt voucher that i am there <coughs> i need to change it to contra on the right hand side you will get all the shortcut buttons for various voucher types so here i am on contra i'll just click on contra now verify what has to be debited and what has to be credited so the first thing is i need to change the date i am on 1st of april click on date change the date to 2nd of april so credit should go to state bank of india so my ledger is already existing so i am just clicking state bank of india 10000 rupees now it is asking how did you withdraw okay so here there are various options through check or e fund transfer or others okay i took a check once when you click on check so it is automatically tracking the check numbers also because while creating the bank ledger we had created what are all the check leaves that we have 1 to 50 so the first check number it's taking on 2nd of april by cash being cash with it drawn for office expense purpose i could just give the the uh, def the definition for this making this transaction brief about what this transaction is all about same okay so i did two transaction now if i want to look at what transaction i did for the day go to day book it will show on the 2nd of april there is one transaction and if you want to change the dates you could just click on date here and change it to first or you could click on alt f2 and give a date range for both the days you want to see you could see for both the days is it clear okay so are there any questions on this so hope you are clear on this if there are any questions i think i have done for the day okay if there are any questions i would like to take you could unmute and ask the question so that i'll be able to answer tomorrow we will continue with this and post this 
uh, training. I will share the presentation on WhatsApp group so that you could go through it and you could work on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so are there any questions? Uh, sir, I think uh, yes, sir. has one question. Oh. So we need to repeat the transaction again on this receipt entry, I think. Receipt entry? Yeah. Who, who had asked for this? I think Gaurav. Gaurav. Yes. Uh, Gaurav, so, which transaction you want to repeat? So, so if I click on transaction and go to receipt, I'm not getting the same screen as you. So it, it, there's no option for to and from. Okay. So. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what you need to do. Why you're not getting the transaction. See, I just changed the mode. Once when you go to receipt, okay, you just see the screen here. Gaurav, you're there? Uh, yes. Okay. So on the receipt, on the right hand side, you have one option called change mode. Click on change mode and select double entry. You will get this option. I think you are on single entry mode. Make it double entry. Click on double entry. Then you will get the screen that I am showing. Yes, sir. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So are there any more questions? I think once we do, we'll get some questions, sir. Today we are not done, so I will not... Okay, no much. problem. So I'll be sharing this presentation. You could uh, share your views, okay, on... Uh, you could just record from your mobile and share the views on the group so that people might understand. Okay, and also give your feedback if I'm fast or if I'm slow. Okay, I need to add uh, any things or you want us to... Uh, change few of the things. We are always open for your feedbacks. You could always give the feedbacks. We could take those feedbacks and make the necessary corrections. Okay, so as we move forward, as I told you yesterday, okay, the short uh, clip about our organization, what are all the things that we do? Okay, we do custom specific development. We do trainings. Okay, we sell software, we renew the software for any requirements of your business or, or your friends or relatives, please refer us. Okay, and these are our contact details. You could always contact us for anything and if you have any queries, please put it on chat. Sorry, either you could put it on chat here or on the WhatsApp group, we'll be happy to answer. Okay, I'll just wait for two minutes. If there are any questions, you can please ask or we could close this session. Thank you, everyone. So I'll just wait for two more minutes. Those who do not have questions can log off. Those who have questions can unmute and speak and pose your questions. Okay, thanks. Since I am not getting any uh, questions, we are ending this session. Thank you, everyone.